Tim, welcome. Good to be here. Nestle has previously been named among the best companies for leadership. What's Nestle's leadership philosophy and how has it helped the company? Yes, well the philosophy of Nestle's leadership starts with the Nestle management and leadership principle. It's a document that lays out the expectations we have of our people, uh, very closely tied to the values of the company. The foundation of that really is integrity. Uh, it's a 147-year-old company, fundamentally built on trust that our consumers have with our products, and we need our people to behave in a fashion that's consistent with the values of the company. There's a couple other elements, though, that I think are important, uh, one of which is diversity, and specifically cultural diversity. Nestle operates in literally every country in the world. Because of that, they highly value people to move around to different parts of the world and get the cultural experience of the consumers and the environment that we operate in. It very much helps when you're developing products or developing systems to meet those countries or cultures. The last thing is, is really based on experience or experiential learning. Uh, the idea that you would do different things functionally, that you would learn through your experiences and then reflect on those experiences and attempt to do better the next time. Uh, so this idea of values, culture, diversity, and experience all wrapped together, uh, you've got a high degree of continuity in the company, you've got a great amount of mentorship that goes on in the company, uh, people can look uh, at the history and the experience of the company and learn for themselves. So it all ties together this idea of longevity and the right way to do things. Really, I think when people talk about Nestle and leadership, it revolves around that. Uh, incorporating sustainability into business practices has been fundamental to Nestle's success. Can you tell us about the benefits and how it has made Nestle a leader in the marketplace? Yeah, when it comes to sustainability, I think it's part of even a broader concept. You know, we, we often talk about corporate social responsibility. Uh, we've defined a slightly different version, uh, the Porter definition, of creating shared value. And I will tell you that if I take an example, uh, like we've developed with the cocoa plant, that really works on a sustainability platform, but also building up social systems, uh, it has a couple of benefits. One is that we're literally going to get access to better cocoa at fair prices uh, over the long haul. And we know that the supply of that cocoa will be more sustainable because the foundation of it will be built on better plants and more successful farmers who have fundamentally a better way of life. So that in itself is a security of supply. The added benefit you get is sort of a social contract that you have with your employees wherever they are in the world. Today's employee needs to know that they're working for a good company. They have a minimum amount of social responsibility that they will accept from their employer. So having a foundation of CSR or CSV uh, helps with employee engagement. It helps with employee recruiting. It helps get employees focused and engaged on what needs to be done because they can see the whole value chain and the connectivity of what they do and how it goes all the way back to the farm. So there's tremendous benefits, uh, literally uh, financial benefits, uh, long-term business value benefits, but also uh, inherent cultural and people uh, benefits that we get from sustainability. Nestle uh, has had its share of crises. And so what advice would you give to students of business leadership for dealing with these challenging situations? First and foremost, transparency. It's critical that the public can understand and believe that you have credibility in what you're saying. The greatest way to get credibility is to be as transparent as possible. Uh, 
you know, as we've gone through these situations, we, like any company, have learned. And we learn that when you uh, approach the problem as directly as possible, as quickly as possible, invite credible third parties in to see your work, make it available, uh, handle questions in a very forward and upfront way, this, you can deal with the situation or the root cause of the issue rather than the after effects of the situation or what was caused by it. And oftentimes, uh, when things aren't handled the best way, you find yourself fighting fires or dealing with issues that weren't core to where things started in the first place. So it's fundamental to our principles as a company to be more transparent. I think there's a benefit in transparency in that uh, you allow uh, your perspective or your understanding of the situation to come forward before someone assigns one to you. Uh, and it's efficient uh, because you can work things in a, in a much quicker way. Last, uh, you might find that there's help out there and from the most unusual places to deal with your situation. So nobody's perfect. These things happen from time to time. We've learned um, as we've gone, uh, especially the last 40 years, to be as transparent as possible, as direct as possible, and as uh, cooperative as we can possibly be. And that's benefiting us in a great way. All right. Tim, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Uh,